Hey everyone, today we're going to be using Epiphany to pull in data from CoinGecko. If you don't have Epiphany installed yet, go ahead and check for the link down in the description below. Otherwise, when you're in your Google Sheet, go ahead and go Extensions, Epiphany, and Import API. Once that's pulled up, what we're looking for is our API URL path that we need. So we have our CoinGecko API pulled up over here. So for the CoinGecko API, we have two parts that we need to put together. One is the base URL, which is here at the top. So this is part api.coingecko.com forward slash api forward slash v3. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and bring that back here. So one thing to keep in mind is it doesn't have that HTTPS prepended. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. So that's HTTPS colon two forward slashes and then api.coingecko.com. So once we have that together, we'll go back here. And what we're gonna look at is we have a number of different endpoints here. So this one's just a status. We have what they call some simple ones here. We have some coin API endpoints. We scroll down, we see some contracts, asset platforms, coin categories, exchanges, indexes, derivatives, exchange rates, search, trending, global, and companies. So there's a bunch of different endpoints we can use. They all function the same way. So we're gonna show you a couple of these today and that should give you enough to be able to pull whichever ones you need. So one thing to keep in mind, so we're gonna go ahead and look at these coins first, is that CoinGecko uses a unique coin ID and you're gonna need that to pull um, data for any specific coin. So you can pull this coins list and we're gonna go ahead and do that but I'm also gonna show you where to look this up on CoinGecko itself directly. So before I get too far ahead, so here's our endpoint. You can see four slash coins, four slash list. They don't really make it friendly to copy and paste like some places do. So we're just gonna go back over here and do coins list. So once we've got that in there, we're gonna go ahead and hit run down here and run. And then after a minute, we're gonna see those results come back in. So this is the name of the coin. Okay, and then this is symbol and this is the ID that you would need to reference. So if you're just looking at a bunch of different coins, you can go that way. Another thing you can do is if you go straight to CoinGecko's main site, let's take a look at Bitcoin. What you're gonna see over here is API ID right there. And you can see it's Bitcoin all lowercase. If we go back here, we can look at Ether, and Ether's API ID there is Ethereum. And then we can look at Binance Coin, there you can see right there, the API ID is right there. So whichever way works easier for you, um, but I just wanted to make sure you were aware. So that's the first API call, is the coins list. So the next endpoint let's get is this coins forward slash markets. And so we see here on the parameters, we have a, a number of different ones we can use. We see this first one is required and the others are optional. So we can start with this. So let's go back here. We'll change from coins list to coins markets. And then we need to do this versus currency. So actually, let me get rid of this first forward slash. So to start our parameters, I'll do a question mark and then we're doing versus currency, yes, versus underscore currency equals USD. All right, so we can go ahead and click run. And we see those new results pop in just like that. So we see all those stats go down and it automatically limit to 100. So if we wanted to get the next set, if you go down here, we can see that per page and page. And you could just concatenate these next parameters with the and per page equals 100 and page equals one and page equals two, etc. cetera. Um, otherwise this will show, I believe, um, sorting by market cap descent right there is the default. So it'll show the largest market cap Descending. All right, 
let's see what else we can do here. So let's try a specific coin one. So we can do coins ID market chart. So we look down here, we have, here's the endpoint we need. So coins, so let's go back here. So the ID would be Bitcoin, it'd be from that first list that we're talking about, um, this ID right here. So that's what we're using to fill that in, forward slash market chart. market underscore chart. So now we have a couple required parameters here. Um, and so we could try filling this out here to see what this looks like. Bitcoin, USD, and let's stay, do one day, execute. So we can see down here, so we have coins forward slash Bitcoin. So we already have that ID that tells you here uh, in the path. And down here it's query. So we already have the ID taken care of because um, we had Bitcoin for slash market chart. So what we need is this versus currency and days. So let's go ahead and add that in. Versus currency equals USD and days equals one. All right, let's go ahead and run that. All right. And so these here are Unix timestamps. So if you want to figure out what these dates are, you just take one of these, convert Unix to date, and just grab one of these. And then you can see what that date is. So that's how the date time they work with is. Um, and so you can reverse that around um, for their ones that require you to enter a date. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do next. So we'll clear this out. All right, next let's take a look at this forward slash coins ID tickers. And so you can see here, um, required, this is in the path, coin ID. So we can see that's right there. So let's go ahead and do this one. So we got coins, bitcoins, and then we just need tickers. Go ahead and run this. And now we can see for Bitcoin and the various tickers it has. All right, let's try one more. And this will kind of really quickly show with that timestamp again. So they have this Unix timestamp here as an example. So what we can do is we have coins for slash ID. And again, we see required is ID in the path. So the other three we'll need after that is versus currency and then the from and the to. So let's go ahead and just build it here. So we'll do Bitcoin, USD, and we're just gonna grab their example timestamps. And if you need to dynamically generate one, you can just Google that, convert date to Unix, and get your time that way. And then you could just fill that in instead of this. All right, so here is our final URL. So you can see coins, Bitcoin, market chart, range, versus currency equals USD, and from that first timestamp to the last timestamp. So let's go ahead and try this one out. Replace this whole URL with that. And then we'll go ahead and try running this one. So there we see our timestamps and the price accordingly. All right, so one thing to keep in mind with CoinGecko, uh, we can try one of these other ones here. Um, let's say simple price. Um, let's do Bitcoin, USD is. Um, so CoinGecko has an open API, so sometimes it gets overloaded. And so if you get that response, that's what's going on, and we'll see if we can pull this or not. Let's go ahead and run this. Some of these common ones get overloaded frequently. And if so, then you'll get this error code 1015. So you might have to use some of the less frequently used endpoints. Uh, for example, this coins market is used less frequently than um, the coins ID and ones like that. So, or you could use Binance, Coinbase, or some of the other exchanges that also have data available. And we will have those links also down in the description. 
right, thank you very much, folks. I hope that was helpful for you, and we'll see you again soon.